I'm Yair Shapira, and I had a company uh, called Moon Speech, which deals with uh, speech therapy, actually with the problem of uh, stuttering. I'll tell you a bit about uh, myself. I know someone here has a speech issue. I won't, uh, out here. So, uh, I'll tell you a bit about myself, just to continue what I was told you about. So, my short history. Um, I uh, served in the Army in a technological unit, uh, then I uh, moved on to uh, where I also did my BA in physics and math, and later on I moved uh, to do a PhD in biomedical engineering at a very young age of uh, 25 or 26, I already was a doctor, which has uh, helped me to uh, get some good jobs. And then while I did my PhD in the Technion in Haifa, uh, my uh, roommate uh, had a good idea, uh, or he thought at the time it was a good idea, uh, to do something about the brain, some simulation of the brain, some cloudy thing, uh, which we started. So we took some money from my reserve duty guys, from my family, from his family, and started a company. Later on, uh, we got some more better funding, about uh, close to $1 million. And later on, we got funding from a huge Japanese bank of uh, $36 million. Uh, this was uh, back in 97, 98, before you guys were born, I guess. Uh, so, before you were very young. And, um, and the company uh, continued, and this was my first disappointment uh, because it never uh, flew off. So, uh, it, it just dissolved in 2002. Uh, and I moved on to uh, other companies. Uh, I served in executive positions, starting from technology, because I'm a technologist by heart, and then moved on to uh, sales and marketing, also spent some time uh, living in uh, Europe, in the Netherlands, uh, and we did very well. Uh, so I served in uh, three, four, five companies. Um, most of them did very well. Some of them were, were acquired or, or floated in, in the in stock exchanges. Um, but they all dealt with uh, communication, security, uh, this kind of stuff, which I thought after a few years that is a bit uh, boring. That's uh, one side of the story. The other side of the story is this, please, if you can listen. <laughs> Because they don't speak. 
a shy guy in the corner, he stutters, but he doesn't speak. And when he is asked, he chooses words. So uh, when you ask him how much is four and four, and it's difficult for him to say eight, he will say nine, and then he will be considered stupid. But he's not, he just stutters. And he chooses or selects the word that he wants to utter. So stuttering is just the tip of the iceberg. What we hear stuttering, what we hear mean, is just the tip of the iceberg. Internally, in the people's brain, in the feeling, they have all this 90% is, is emotional. Some people that are called covert stutterers do not stutter at all externally. You cannot hear them stutter. They are so smart at choosing words that they can speak freely or almost freely, and you would never hear them stutter, but internally, they are totally terrorized by speech, and they wouldn't take a job in which they need to speak, and they wouldn't uh, hit on girls, and they wouldn't speak to friends. They just wouldn't do that. And then we learned that Niv is not uh, unique. He stutters and many other people stutter, but also this story that he goes to the therapy, succeeds, and then relapses, lapses back to his stutter when he's back home, is also not unique. Out of six kids or children that go to therapy, five will continue to stutter. They will speak fluently in <coughs> therapy, but five will continue to stutter. And for me as an engineer, as a technologist, this seemed very odd. What would you expect from, from a stuttering therapy or speech therapy? Permanent change. Excuse me? Permanent change. Permanent change, right? It needs to be somehow maintained. Um, by which techniques? What would you expect him to actually do in the clinic? Gain confidence. Right? Build confidence. <coughs> what else? Practice. Practice. Practice you can you cannot do in the clinic. Maybe you can do it for one hour a week, but then you expect the guy to practice at home, right? Well, again, me as an engineer, scientist, PhD, mathematician. I also come from the medical space where everything is measured. The first thing I thought is uh, Guys, what is, how severe does Niv stutter? How is he when you compare it to other people who stutter? And then I asked the therapist, and the therapist told me he's about six. Yes, oh, six what? In what units? And she said, uh, well, six. <laughs> and yeah, he was four, now he's six. <laughs> so he's much better. So it's good that you pay $4,000 for the therapy. <laughs> <laughs> And maybe if it's better, we'll get to seven. <laughs> seven what? Who measures? How do you measure? And speech is not something hidden, right? Speech is something very measurable. Siri uh, can analyze speech. So it's not rocket science. Even rocket science is not rocket science. So, <laughs> right? So we said, okay, let's do something about it. Let's do something uh, engineering uh, about it. Because they have, they have no clue, these guys. They are the professionals but they are still somewhere in the cloud of psychology or confidence or they don't want to measure, I, I don't know. Um, so what would you do? What technology would you invent? So I'll tell you, my mother, she suggested on a Friday evening uh, uh, dinner, she said Nick had a very bad day and he really started severely and then he went on to play something and then she told me and my wife, she told me, you are both PhDs in biomedical engineering. All of you are Jewish mother, right? <laughs> you both are PhDs in biomedical engineering. Take this thing out with something else. Right? Like you take the heart out and you put the artificial heart. Well, we didn't want to do that. <laughs> but, but we had to think what would be another solution. Any ideas? Your brain. Your brain. Do something in the brain. Stimulate the brain. Stimulate the brain. By the way, this works. Uh, nobody would do that because it's not ethical, but this works. If you stimulate the brain in the right point, uh, you may solve, be able to solve something. The problem sounds psychological, so I think for a long-term solution, it wouldn't be what's going with the scalpel and change those. So you have to like talk to the patient. So you have to convince him to speak fluently. No, it's convincing. It's helping him gain confidence. And yeah. And deal with the fear and anxiety and every hopelessness. So, so it's a confidence issue. No, but, but okay. is, is it a psychological issue or is it a neurological issue? What do you think? Both. 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 Who thinks psychological? They'll say only psychological. Who thinks only neurological? <laughs> so all of you, all the rest
rest I don't think or think it's both. <laughs> All the yeah. um, so <laughs> actually what we learned uh, in time is that uh, it was considered a, a psychological issue uh, because it is amplified in psychological states, right? When you're stressed, you probably start uh, start more. Uh, but today it's known that it's totally neurological. It starts neurologically. Uh, usually it starts in your first world, like with me. <coughs> Sometimes it starts, it starts later on because of uh, hormone changes which change something in the brain. Now think about speech. Uh, how many muscles are involved when you walk? Um, most of your body, but only, yeah. For example, your tongue is not involved, right? <laughs> But uh, when you walk, we are talking about 30, 40 muscles that deal with walking. And uh, how fast do you walk? How many um, steps in a second? Let's say two. When you speak, you have 150 muscles from the diaphragm all the way to your face and all that thing. And um, they are that are involved in your speech. And you speak at about, I speak at about six syllables a second. So it's like six steps every second. If I try to walk this way, I would definitely start in walking. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's no wonder that people stutter. And uh, think about this. This is the most co speech. It's the most complex motor thing that the body does. Uh, how do we know? Do any of you drink? Obviously. Yeah. When you drink, what is the first thing that goes wrong? Yeah. We start uh, speaking like this, right? Some people call it the blurry speech, right? Uh, when you get a stroke, what's the first thing that goes wrong? Your speech. So it's the most fragile thing in the in your body. So it is neurological, but when something emotional uh, lies on it, when you're stressed, it just breaks down for these people because it's much more fragile than with you. Know. So it is neurological, and what it would also what I also noticed, and also speech therapist told me, is that people who stutter again, you may not know that they are not fully aware of their stuttering. So me, if my son can say uh, the 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 the, the Daddy, and I'll ask him, Nip, what happened? And he'll say, ah, just a small, small glitch. And how long was your block? And he'll say, I don't know, half a second? And it may be 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. Because when they stutter, they're in a blackout. 400 milliseconds, almost half a second before they stutter, they know that they're going to stutter. <coughs> That's why they think that they're fully aware. Because they know that they're hitting the, the wall. That's why later on, when they become aware of the stuttering, they start finding all kinds of workarounds. They do this and that and, and, and this and, and they prolong. They say, daddy, right? And they say, D and stop and continue because they know that they're going to hit the wall. But once they hit the wall, that's it. They're, they're doomed. Are these classified as aphasias? And aphasia is a, is a different problem. It's more yeah. motoric problem. So it's more peripheral neuro uh, neuro problem. It's uh, on the contrary. It's more central. <laughs> it is central. It's so central. It's not cortex. It's about basal ganglia. Yeah. Okay, but it's not cortex. It is cortex. Yeah. But it's not classified as aphasia. No, aphasia is uh, usually the the loss of uh, tension of your uh, speech uh, yeah. and organs. Good question. I don't know. <laughs> So, <laughs> 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 is that is that the focus area of the brain, or is it all just the cortex? I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, but I'll tell you, there is very little known uh, about stuttering. It's a very elusive uh, thing. And one of the reasons that, that there is not much known about it is that it's not a science. It's an art of speech therapists. The scientists that deal with it usually do not come from speech therapy. Uh, so, for example, one of them is he's a funny name. His name is uh, Professor Jerry McGuire from uh, Irvine, California. He's the head of the National Stuttering Association in the US, a, a part of ours. He's a neurologist. He stutters, and he's trying to develop a drug uh, to deal with it. But he came from neurology. He's not a speech therapist. The speech therapists go into this uh, subject that typically take a, a more psychological, emotional approach, especially in the US. Does that work? I mean, does that, does that ever work? Yeah, from, yeah, 16%. 16%. This is the relapse, by the way, what second only to heroin. So, compared to other um, speech disorders, yeah, it's, it's one of the most difficult speech disorders, uh, but other speech disorders are not as good as you would expect. So, you can hardly treat other speech disorders, and we'll get to it in a second. Okay, I want to take you through the path and then show you the, a bit of light. Right. So, uh, what we learn is that because uh, people who start are not fully aware when they start there, 
they need some external feedback to get out of it. And in the 60s, 70s, uh, a common practice was to stop them by doing something, some mark. So I know that when I tell Niv, I tap him, he stops. Stops and continues fluently because he has the tool to continue fluently. It's just not, he cannot stop himself. Uh, so at first, naively, we thought that we are going to develop this thing. Okay, we put a device that will detect your stuttering, and once it uh, detects that you stutter, it will give you some kind of a vibration, some of the electricity pulse, but no idea, right? So you get some kind of a notification that you stutter, it will be your own, and you will detect your stuttering. Uh, with that, in 2012, um, well, next And with that, we went to the office of the chief scientist. Uh, did you tell them about the office of the chief scientist? No. So, Israel government, uh, Ministry of Economy, has a chief scientist office. Uh, yeah, he is the chief scientist. He's actually not a scientist, he's a financier. Uh, <laughs> but that is the title. And this um, entity subsidizes up to 50% sometimes even 85% of the technological activities of uh, startups and grown companies uh, in Israel. Not for everyone, not uh, that they of course do some technological due diligence to see that, you are, that you, what you do makes sense, uh, both technologically and business-wise. And we pass that. And uh, the first thing they do, they give you $25,000 and tell you, go ahead, build some kind of a prototype, uh, check the market, do something. That was back in 2012. I was then a vice president of something at some something company, and uh, which was very well. I was very well paid. I really enjoyed it. So at night, I tried to do something about it. Uh, the next thing I did, I don't know if you can read it. Uh, I went to the top clinician here in Israel. Uh, her name is Professor Ezrati, and she said this is a wonderful idea, but it's impossible to do uh, because how can you do? How can you detect stuttering? How can you measure stuttering? Nobody does it. It's like the holy grail of speech therapy, but nobody ever succeeded to do that, which of course encouraged me to do that. Um, if it's impossible, then it will be possible. Um, well, I tried. Um, my PhD was actually on speech, so I said, it's a no-brainer. Catching stuttering? What's the problem? It's such a, a big uh, phenomenon. What's the issue? Every two-year-old can know if you stutter or not. Easier said than done. And I tried and tried and consulted people and read all the papers and all the journals and nothing, nothing, nothing. And then I met uh, this guy, uh, Dr. Yoav Medan. Uh, Yoav, he is uh, very well known for uh, two things. One is that he's the guy who started speech processing in IBM uh, globally in California. Second is that later on when he came back to Israel, he was the chief technology officer of uh, company called Insightec, and they developed ultrasound, focused ultrasound brain surgery. So they can do brain surgery without cutting the head. Okay. And uh, so he's, he's a very well-known guy and an expert in speech processing. And I also joined forces with uh, Professor Ofer Amir, who is the number one clinician uh, now in Israel, just for the fact that he is head Tel Aviv University School of Communication Disorders. And he's very frustrated with the unscientific nature, as he, call it, as he calls it, impressionistic nature of uh, speech therapy. So together we started thinking, how can we detect stuttering? This is my game to you. How can you detect stuttering? Vibrations. Vibrations. Sound in general is vibrations, right? So definitely you have to listen to the vibrations. Any other ideas? An octopus, yeah, he will, he will detect your stuff. <laughs> um, well, it, that, some sort of technology that uh, detects like sustained noise, like the, the same sound for the same sound, yeah. Uh, skin tone change. Skin tone? Yeah. Okay, so you, you feel the stress itself. Yeah. So, naively, I thought that uh, Siri like solutions that detect what you say will be sufficient, right? Because if you say the, 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 daddy, then you will find that it says the, 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 daddy. And if you say the, daddy, then as you suggest, 
uh, you've been prolonged there. And what happens if you stop, if you start, and then you block? How do you know if it's a block, or is it just a drama like I did now? So yesterday I was in Jerusalem. Is this a block or not a block? Or when you say, when you start to be more uh, creative in your stuttering, which happens usually with teenagers, so to bypass their stuttering, they build <coughs> techniques. For example, uh, if they know that they're going to stutter, and they want to say, yesterday I was in Jerusalem, but they're afraid of the word Jerusalem, they will say, yesterday I was in, uh, uh, let me remember, Jerusalem. Is this a stuttering or not? It is. It is, because if the guy does it all the time, then you need to treat him, right? And uh, do you know, have you heard of the word interjections? Interjections are those words that you feel into your sentence when you have nothing to say, when you are hesitant, when you don't find the word, or when you stutter. By the way, interjections are different in each and every language. Uh, you are five days in Israel, what do Israelis say when they interject? They say, eh, right? So Israelis, when they don't know what to say, they say, et mol haiti ve Yerushalayim. Right? What do the Americans say? Ah, ah, or like, or you know. Right? What do Japanese say? Ano. And the Chinese say, nega. <laughs> so it's a great culture. Right? <laughs> and and uh, I spoke to Yoav, and I told him what I'm trying to do. And he told me, Yoav is a very uh, blunt Israeli guy. And he told me, you're a stupid. And he told me I'm stupid, uh, which I don't think is true. And, uh, <laughs> and I asked him why, and he said, listen, what you're trying to do is to use techniques that how do you work on normal speech, right? Siri-like solutions. You're trying to understand what people say, which how do works on normal speech. Even Siri, it works when you're alone, when you train the, the machine itself on a limited set of uh, words, on a limited set of sentences. You are trying to use this on pathological speech of people that can hardly say what they want. In different languages, it will never work. And then he asked me a good question, and this is the question I want to ask you. He told me, if you put someone underwater and you listen to him underwater, you are both under, in, in the water in the pool. Have you ever done that? And one of them tries to speak, mm -hmm. right, to spoke under the pool. Will you know what he says? No. Will you know uh, who is it, who it is? Will you know what language he speaks? Hardly. Will you know if he stutters? No? Yes? Good question. So, we tried. Clearly, clearly, you may be able to understand something of what he says. Uh, you may be able to understand that he speaks English, but hardly, but you definitely can exactly pinpoint his stuttering moments. Which means that stuttering has nothing to do with what you say or with who you are, which is exactly what most of speech processing does. It has to do something with your tempo, with the vibrations, right, with the flow of your speech, or as you have called it, with the music. Because this is music, this is not speech. This is music. It has something to do with the tempo, right? With the change of pitch, of tone. You expect people to speak in some way, right? But it doesn't work. It stops, it jumps. Uh, it has nothing to do with the wording itself. And that's when we had a breakthrough and uh, we were able to develop something that started detecting. Again, easier said than done within two years. It took us two years to develop something that works. And uh, when I was always asked, uh, okay, so when are you leaving your job and building a company? Which is uh, a personal uh, risk. Um, my answer was, when we are able to detect suffering in Chinese. And then at the end of 2014, we detected suffering in Chinese. And we compared it to speech therapist in Chinese, and it was excellent. <coughs> and then we said, okay, so let's build something uh, nicer. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah. Okay. Let's build something uh, that is software based, not the device from 2012. 
right? Something in application, a dashboard, a smartwatch that lets you know that you start and if you stop your stuttering and everything will be blue sky. Uh, this was 2013, 2014. Uh, we felt very good about it. We were in the center of the buzz, right? Mobile health, wearable technology, big data, and mini speeches in the center. We were very uh, strongly minded about what we do. We had a very naive uh, work plan that within half a year we go out to the market because <laughs> it's not a problem. It took a while. And then in the end of 2014, I left my job. And in 2015, I had the courage at the time uh, to go and tell the world that this is what I'm doing, which is a, pers a huge personal risk. I have a name to protect, right? And this may be a total uh, collapse, this thing, total failure. And then uh, we started getting attention from the media. And we were invited by all kinds of uh, shows and, and uh, events. Still, zero money except for the Office of the Chief Scientist. Uh, we started to get um, awards in uh, very prestigious uh, events. And then I got my first check. This is from uh, Mirage Institute. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Mirage Institute is a, a funding institute of uh, Paul Mirage. He's a billionaire from uh, California, uh, a Jewish billionaire that uh, does every year. He has a contest uh, for hundreds of Israeli startups, selects one and gives them $100,000. And as you can see, this was mine. By the way, the check did not uh, go through <laughs> because the dollar here has only one L. <laughs> Seriously, I got the money. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, I did get some uh, disappointments. For example, in this event, I was awarded one million dollars, which is not bad. I never saw this money. So, it's very typically, it's a roller coaster. Some happens, some does not. Then in July, uh, I went to the International Fluency Association event. This is the biggest event for stuttering. Happened in Portugal. <coughs> and I met the top, top guy. This, this lady is the head of the Stuttering Foundation of the US. This guy hands, uh, uh, heads the Stuttering Hangout. This is the most prestigious uh, researcher in, uh, uh, in Europe. He stutters, of course, not everyone. I'm the only one who doesn't stutter, I think. Uh, and uh, they all were very excited about what we do. And just like my colleague Offer said, uh, they said, yeah, it's hardly possible. We didn't believe it can happen, which again is very encouraging to me. <laughs> and then in July, we developed this prototype. It was a proof of concept just to see that our claim that feedback does stop suffering works. So it, as you see, it's not the most beautiful application. It's connected to a very sad uh, bracelet. But I heard that Bill Clinton said that 99% of the show is true. So, so as the former president of the United States, I believe him. But it works. So once you provide feedback, people start focusing on their speech, and it works. But it works only for a minute or two or three or five just like it used to work before. So you can get their attention, you can get their focus, but you cannot maintain the practice as you suggested. You cannot take the, uh, you cannot bring up the confidence and they need to practice alone and it's boring and uh, it's not stressing enough. So we had to take another step. And the other step <coughs> was to build an environment in which people can actually practice and assimilate whatever they are taught into their brain. Um, which is again an application, but this time it's an application where you can speak to other people who stutter. So now you have the social part, you have the uh, stressing part, you get feedback, you get something to talk about, you grade yourself, you have friends, you have games, and it answers many questions uh, that so far were not answered uh, in the field of uh, stuttering therapy and what we learned later on, and like someone asked, also in other fields of speech therapy. We launched it in the uh, end of 2015 in the, the Google campus here in Israel. Directly to consumers, we said, you will be our testers. You are our guinea pigs, and we will see if it works for you. And then we started getting uh, extremely good feedback. 
a mother of a 12 year old told us this is the first time she hears him say full sentences and not only a word here or a word there. Uh, this guy uh, was practically mute. He never spoke. And uh, he called me to tell me that he ordered a pizza, which is probably the most frightening thing uh, that you can do as a, as a person who stutters. We started going to clinics in, in uh, Europe. These are the biggest clinics in Europe, the biggest clinics in Germany and in Norway and in Portugal and in France. And they all opened uh, their hands and doors and started piloting with us. Uh, now a good friend of mine, uh, Dr. Gonzalo Leal, tells me, I was totally blind, I don't know how I walked for 20 years. Uh, it's the first time that I can measure my uh, progress, I can see whether people actually comply with what I tell them to do, right? I can know if what they tell me is true or not. And we got all kinds of uh, uh, data points, uh, we started collecting data points, now imagine. We measure every syllable our thousands of users say. Every syllable that they say when they practice. So we accumulated 4 million data points within 3 months. This is 100 times more than the total accumulated knowledge of stuttering since the, in the last century. Right? So think what, what an asset we hold. Do you know these people? Mm -hmm. Who do you know? Einstein. Hey, Einstein. Einstein, well, he's in the middle. Have you heard of Schrodinger and Charlie, right? And uh, Heisenberg. Niels Bohr, yeah, so you may know someone. Any ladies here? Any ladies here? Marie Curie, yeah. So this was taken in the 20s. This is a picture of all the big phys uh, physicists uh, in the 20s, which was the, the golden age of physics. Planck, yeah? Right? I, I, always think, I always think what would happen if there was like a terror attack at that point, but there would be no physics. So these are all the top physics, physicists in, uh, in the 20s. And these are all the top researchers in suffering therapy, and they all endorse us. So today we work with the top clique, with the really top 10 names in uh, suffering therapy all around the world. This is the equivalent of those uh, physicists. Um, we developed the only measurement for stuttering. So the only way to measure stuttering today is by any speech. We have deals with the Dutch Association, we get lots of media attention, uh, books written about us. Um, we are the platform for teaching new therapists uh, how to deal with their stuttering. So now, when they learn uh, how to, how to uh, practice therapy, they use any speech. Uh, and we continue to win awards. I'm showing the Chinese thing, uh, because China is a separate story, and this I think will be my uh, one before the last. Um, in China, there are no speech therapists. In the US, there are 170,000 speech therapists. In China, which is about three times bigger, there are 1,000 therapists. So practically, you cannot get speech therapy in China if you have a problem. But you can get any speech. So in the rest of the world, we don't plan, we don't aim uh, to replace any speech therapist. We work with them, not against them. In China, there are no speech therapists, so this is second best. So just think what we could do to the 30 million people who study in China or the 100 million people with speech disorders in China. And just uh, last week, we won the second place in the...